Hello everyone, welcome to my speech titled Multitask Regularization Based on Infrequent Classes for Audio Captioning. My name is Emre Çakır and this work has been done with my co-authors Konstantinos Drosos and Thomas Virtanen for Tampere University. This work is a part of DKS 2020 workshop and also DKS 2020 challenge task, task 6 on audio captioning. Let me start by quickly defining what do we mean by audio captioning. So audio captioning is basically automate, automatically generating textual descriptions uh, of the contents of general audio recordings. So whatever we can define by listening to an audio uh, in terms of sound events, sound happenings, um, these and making it into a concrete uh, grammatically correct se sentence. Uh, such examples can be given as the wind blows while cars are passing by and a man alternates between talking and flapping a piece of cloth in the air three times. So as you can see, the audio captions uh, compared to image captions, for instance, so we're all familiar with the image captions, but the audio captioning um, is qu quite subjective. Um, many people can define the same audio recording uh, in very different ways. Um, and there are also other elements such as there's the temporal element coming into play, as you can see in the second example, uh, in the air three times. So an automatic audio captioning system should be able to uh, understand also this sort of uh, information from the audio directly. So if you go to our proposed method, it's a multitask, we call it multitask regularized auto encoder. So on the upper left corner, you'll see uh, an audio waveform and its targets uh, caption, a bell rings three times as birds chip in the background. So in our proposed method, we would first be uh, conducting feature extraction, so we'd extract log Melbourne energy features, and we would employ an autoencoder scheme uh, with two different encoder, two different decoders and single encoder. So, um, in our caption decoder, we would have basically a target output matrix for each recording that we have, and the the columns of this uh, target output would be uh, one hat encoded and we will obtain it by basically marking uh, at each time step uh, which word uh, that we want to that that is uh, inside in, in the uh, given uh, time step so as you can see here a bell rings three times we will be basically encoding it uh, in the horizontal axis it will be the time steps and vertical axis it will be the which word uh, we, we will be trying to detect. And in the content word decoder, which we will talk a bit more in detail in the next slide, but so the content word decoder output will be not a matrix this time, but it will be a vector and it will be a multi-label vector. Uh, so it can have multiple uh, multiple uh, ones in this binary binary vector. We can have multiple ones, and uh, we will be basically marking each um, content word that's present, uh, regardless of its time step. Um, we will be marking all of them um, in a single vector. So here we see bell rings three times, burst, chip, chirp, background uh, as the target output. So uh, coming to content words and function words. Um, in linguistics, content words is defined as the words that convey information in a text or speech act. So these words are nouns, verbs, adjectives, etc. So the words that have that, that bring in the information. Um, whereas, in, whereas the function words would be words that have little lexical meaning or have ambiguous meaning. 
such examples are articles, prepositions, etc. And so basically they're tying up the, the content words into a sentence in a grammatical sense. And um, obviously they will be much more commonly found uh, in a sentence uh, compared to many of the content words because they're, they're, uh, they're supposed to be there regardless of what kind of information uh, the, uh, the sentences convey. And if you, if you think in terms of machine learning, um, this will introduce some sort of bias to our system because they will be, these function words will be uh, very much overrepresented in our data set. So um, back to our proposed method. So we are basically trying to solve two different tasks. Uh, the first task will be this multi-class word level alter captioning. So we will be uh, there will be the time axis involved in in this task, and for each time step, we will be trying to find the word that's present. And one additional um, method that we employ here is to uh, introduce weights for each of the word uh, based on their uh, frequency and inversely proportional to their frequency. So we are trying to basically boost the weight of the words that are less commonly found in our data set, um, which are most likely content words, and try to de-emphasize the function words effect in our, uh, our weight in our training loss. And the second task would be uh, related to the second branch, second decoder branch, content word detection branch. And this will be a multi-label task. It will be done on the clip level. So we wouldn't have the time axis in this case. And this will, the, we consider this as sort of uh, as a regular regularizer for audio captioning encoder. And since both of these, um, both of both caption decoder and content word decoder are fed through the same encoder and uh, which is obviously using the same features. So, uh, and our inference model will be the encoder and caption decoder to get the full sentence output. Um, so the content for decoder is basically a helper in this case. So if you talk a bit about hyperparameters that we use, so we used 64 log Melbourne energy features in calculated in 46 millisecond windows. And our encoder consists of uh, three bidirectional gated recurrent unit layers. So a recurrent, uh, recurrent architecture we use there with 512 units. In our decoder, we employ one GRU layer with 512 units, and we employ the dropout after every uh, encoder layer with probability 0.25 for further regularization. And so these parameters were selected uh, based on grid search. And for our loss functions, we use uh, weighted non-negative log likelihood loss for audio captioning weights, as I explained, uh, proportional, inversely proportional to the word frequency. And we employ cross entropy loss for content word de detection. Our evaluation data set, um, as per the task six for DK 2020 challenge, uh, is CLOTA. So it's an audio captioning data set which includes about 5,000 real life recordings, uh, each being 15 to 30 seconds long. And so these are real life recordings and each recording was then um, uh, annotated or um, yeah, annotated with five, uh, five, hum yeah, five human, humans and um, uh, this was done through crowdsourcing. So you are included a, an example of these five different captions for the same audio recording. So as you can see, um, the captions are highly subjective, of course, and uh, the words that are included 
change quite a lot. Um, the length of the, the length of the produced captions also change quite significantly. Um, this is some of the capture um, how challenging task it would be to come up with a single uh, tar target that would be somehow um, giving the best score for these five um, transcriptions combined, caption or captions combined. So we are using the uh, official metrics of the challenge. Uh, these are blow, rogue, meteor, spy, cider, and spider. So these are quite common metrics that are already being used in image captioning um, um, extensively. And in this work, we will also focus on spider metric, which is the linear combination of spice and cider. So it um, it's, it is eval it evaluates both. Uh, fluency and semantic properties of the semantic captions, so both grammatical correctness and also uh, what kind of the information information richness of the estimated captions. If we move on to the results now, um, first of all, I need to explain what's CVR caps and what's CVR VL caps. So CVR caps is basically content word regularized captioning and CVR real caps is content word regularized and weighted loss captioning. Uh, we wanted to try out this both method and both methods and so basically CVR part is the main uh, proposed method and CVR real is uh, by introducing the weighted loss how, how much we can improve the performance. So we wanted to uh, experiment with that. And shortly about the baseline method. So baseline method is also an uh, autoencoder, which would uh, include only the, the regular encoder and the uh, caption decoder part, if we compare to our uh, system overview. So it wouldn't have the weighted loss and it wouldn't have the uh, content for decoder. And also there are a few differences in, in terms of uh, the used input used input features and the training procedure, patients, uh, early stopping, etc., cetera, uh, which is explained in detail in our paper. So if you look at the results, we would see that um, if you also focus on cider, spice, and spider, the, um, we, we see that CVR real caps produces the best performance and also in other metrics. Um, if you look at the positive uh, aspects of the results, so 37% relative increase, um, and uh, we will see the if we compare the last two columns, we would see considerable benefit uh, for using weighted loss for the caption outputs, and this is uh, highlighted more maybe on the cider side, uh, which is most likely due to the TF-IDF weighting uh, done for done for CIDR evaluation. So uh, similar to the weighted loss, it will be uh, giving more weights to the um, words that are more uh, information rich and also less less found in the in the whole data set, less represented in the data set. If you look at the negative aspects of the results, it would be that we have noticed that the produced captions uh, mostly lack the structure of a grammatically valid sentence. So it will be prepositions will be in the wrong places. There will be multiple verbs coming after each other, etc. So there's still, um, of course, it's it's quite a hard task to do all this just using audio. Um, again, we are not employing any sort of like language model um, in this work. So another another aspect is the uh, poor temporal modeling. So the the produced captions uh, grammatically um, it will start to break uh, in seventh eight after seventh seventh eighth word, and it will basically be out, outputting this very common. Uh, 
function words such as a and the etc it will be just repeated repetitively outputting that just to get uh, I, we assume some some sort of like uh, there was some sort of benefit from that but the temporal modeling is quite uh, short is the point and yeah so the these results uh, if you think about the like, future work these results can be uh, we believe that it can be improved with a uh, possibly external trained uh, language model because we noticed that the in the in terms of gram grammar uh, our outputs were lacking and um, yeah um, I think that's pretty much it for my presentation so thanks for listening and I'm happy to answer your questions.